broadcast at Central Baptist Church in Fate Rockwall, Texas. I'm Pastor Charles Ison, and I have the privilege of ministering to you the Word of God and Bible study and preaching on Sunday. I remind our members that Sunday we'll be meeting at the community center called Myers Park on Sunday at uh, 9.30. 9.30. And then we will uh, go to the Calvary Baptist Church for a meeting with the pastor there, Brother Ledford. We're going to ask people to follow us to the uh, Central Baptist parking lot there in Fate. And we'll congregate there. It's a mile and a half south of our old church building. And so we'll meet and uh, the pastor asked we wait till 1230. So I want you to remember that it's very, very important. Please don't miss this meeting. Uh, it's a very fact finding meeting. And the future of our church is definitely involved here and uh i want you to come with any questions and feel free to ask them it's going to be an open forum with a pastor and uh he he doesn't mind being asked questions i'll tell you that the more i talk with him the more confidence i have in him but that's enough of that for now so remember brother logston and renee who's Greatly suffering, Brother Longston had a great improvement today. He was able to read Bible to Renee and going to preach tonight. He was even able to drive his truck to pick up his grandchildren from school. And that is a wonderful, he said, over and over again, answer to prayer, brother, answer to prayer. And I agree with, I believe that. So pray for him as he asks for God to heal his eyes and continue his great ministry in the word of God. Tonight, we're the first Wednesday night in the year 2022. So we're going to launch a new series tonight. That doesn't mean I won't enter, I have intermissions and bring in other things as God leads. But tonight we're gonna start a new Bible program called Basic Principles a communion with God. And I, I really sought the Lord in my spirit. What was the most important thing for me as your pastor to teach you? I think if there's one thing that God would have you to be the most proficient or expert or uh, knowledgeable or best one at doing out of everything in the Christian life, I think it would be prayer. It would be communion with God. It would be walking with the Lord. So I want to talk to you about how to improve your walk with the Lord, with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I believe in teaching practical things. and I want to teach you the importance that prayer has and the impact of that it has on our life. How do we sustain prayer? You know, that's a real big problem, isn't it? The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer. We're going to teach you six different areas of prayer, not tonight, but later, maybe next week. But these all, can, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching there too with all perseverance, don't quit, don't give up, don't stop, and supplication for all saints. That's a big verse, a big prayer request. Then Philippians 4, 6, be careful or anxious or worried about nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests or your prayer be made known unto God. Well, how do we sustain a prayer life? You know, they say that, you know, the longer you're married, sometimes the harder it is to sustain a, 
a good marital relationship. And it's the same way with prayer. To sustain it, uh, it takes a lot of commitment, uh, maybe even recommitment and recommitment. It takes commitment to sustain love and marriage relationship and in prayer with God. So love and prayer can only be sustained through dedication, commitment, and discipline. And uh, Brother John Cross said the reason that people eventually stop praying is because of simple boredom, tiredness, and lack of energy. You know, it's hard to crank up energy to pray. It really is. And uh, because our, our energies are limited, mine's more limited now with my breathing and things than it's ever been before. I don't have hardly enough energy to preach a sermon. But uh, chronic, we get chronically exhausted, too tired, and we get worn out. And some people get too busy, they have wrong priorities, and uh, you can't wait till you feel like praying to pray, because you won't do much praying if you do. And prayer is like eating. You need to discipline yourself to eat, and you need to write things in the right. The right time is what's best. So I want to talk to you tonight about how to improve your walk with God. And I'm going to mention some elements or principles of prayer that may be basic 101 to some people, but it may not be to others. So by way of introduction, I want you to see God wants you to that prayer is relationship, relationship with God. And God wants you to sustain a relationship with him through prayer. He wants you to, one brother called it, incarnating commitment, incarnating commitment. And another says we must learn to pray regularly and no matter what, that we determine, we decide, I'm gonna pray no matter if I feel like it or not, no matter what the circumstances or conditions around me. And so uh, one fellow said he visited his aged mother at the nursing home twice a week, whether he felt like it or not. He made it his commitment. He developed a routine and a ritual to go visit her at a given time. And you must do the same with prayer because prayer is time. We go to God and spend time with him. Uh, Dr. Peter Lloyd wrote that uh, there's a non-negotiable rule for prayer show up, <laughs> exclamation mark, show up regularly, the ups and downs of our minds and hearts must be of secondary importance. So we've got to discipline ourselves, for lack of a better word, to consistency, consistency. Prayer is relationship, number one. Number two, prayer is my response to God. Now, there's three major responses I'd like to give you tonight. Number one, prayer is my response to the character of God. You know, we need to get to know God, and we need to get to know his character. We need to know who God is, and I preach a lot on that because I think that is so important. We naturally respond to God, and our natural response to God should be prayer. Now, let me give you some elements of responding to God's character. Number one, I would say praise. 
Throughout this study, we're going to emphasize praise like never before. But praise is my response to the person, the presence, the position, the power, the greatness, the majesty, and the love of God. <laughs> Excuse me, I've had this all day long. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, praise. Psalm 145, 3. Great is the Lord, and greatly or highly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Cra praise God. Now, I'm just, just going to touch on these, but we'll come back and preach whole messages on them. Then there's thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is my response to the goodness, the graciousness of God. Psalm 116, 12, and 17, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? To thee will I offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, responding to God with praise, responding to God with thanksgiving. Then we'll respond to God with confession. And this is so important, but missed so by so many. Confession is my response to the holiness of God. The holiness of God, God's supreme characteristic is holiness. The holiness of God. Psalm 51, 1, David's prayer of repentance. Be gracious to me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the greatness of thy compassion, blot out my transgressions. Hebrews 4.16, let us draw nigh to God with confidence to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Praise God. So confession responds to the holiness of God. Then next of all, there's intercession. And I want us to become mighty intercessors at our church. Mighty intercessors. This is a ministry that anybody can have. Rich, poor, educated, uneducated, sick, well, uh, whatever. You can have a great ministry of intercession. And intercession is my response to the love that God has for others, and especially those in the family of the Lord, say brothers and sisters. Psalm 28, 9, so save thy people, bless thine inheritance, and be their shepherd also, and carry them forever. And then Colossians 4, 12, I wrote this in my journal today, where he was writing to uh, Epirus, and he said, who is one of your number, a bond slave of Jesus Christ? And he said, this brother sends you his greeting, and look what he did. He always labored earnestly for you in his prayers that you might be perfect and fully assured in all the will of God. And I put that in my journal as one of the things I want to ask for you. Then there's petition under the character of God. There is petition. And petition is my response to God's power, to God's wisdom, and who our Heavenly Father is and what he can do and the fact that he answers prayer. So we bring come to him with our needs. And, our, and Matthew 7, 11, if then a true be an evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more. Shall your Father who is in heaven uh, give you give good gifts to them that ask him? God wants you to ask him things. It's the nature of God to give. <laughs> Love is giving. Love is giving. All right, so number one, my response to God, character. Now, prayer, number two, is my response to the will of God. Though I can't overemphasize this. 
my response to the will of God. We need to pray to have the desire, the power to know and to do the will of God. My response to the will of God. You know, uh, the will of God is not only the highest good and the greatest good to achieve, but it's, uh, it's what God wants to be a, a moving motivation in our daily, uh, our daily life. It's also a command of God. Therefore, because God is God, and God is our loving Heavenly Father, prayer becomes the time to personally uh, inter intercede with him uh, and to bring forth our, our viewpoint, what's on our heart, and uh, bring ourselves to him. And, and, and lay bare our heart and uh, pour our heart out to him and ask him what his will is. Jesus taught in the first you know, disciple prayer. He taught, pray thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray thy will be done as it is in heaven. We should begin every prayer with that because uh, it's not to be my will, but his will. Not my desire, but his desire to be one and the same, to pray as Jesus prayed in John 16. Truly, truly, I, if I ask the Father for anything, he'll give it to you in my name. And until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. What a blessed promise of prayer. And it has to do with the will of God. In Jesus' name. Then the third and last thing I want to teach you tonight is prayer is my response to the invitations of God. You might remember Sunday I preached upon to you about the appointed visitation, Moedim, the appointed visitation of God. Well, do you know God has appointed uh, uh, invitations for you? in prayer yes he yes he does he invites you to pray you have a royal magic majestic invitation to pray and god has filled his words with over 600 great exceeding promises for you to pray to believe to claim and to put into practice number one god gives you the invitation to fellowship I believe this is one of the primary reasons God desired to create man in his own image and his own likeness with a body, soul, and spirit that commune with God, pray to God, talk to God, love God, serve God, and so forth. Psalm 27, 4 and 8, one thing I've asked of the Lord that I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord, to meditate in his temple. What did thou say? Seek my face. And my heart said to thee, thy face, O Lord, will I see. I love the church. I love a meeting with God's people. Uh, and it's not brick and mortar that's important, but it's to be an assembly of believers in the name and for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, we have an invitation of, of God to rest. Uh, oh, I love 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care, meaning your anxiety, your burden upon him, for he cares for you. He said, come unto me, all ye. That includes everyone. All ye that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me and you shall find rest in your soul. My burden is easy. Why? Because he's pulling, he's pulling the weight, and my, his, uh, his burden is light. Praise God. Invitation to fellowship, an invitation to rest. And then he gives us an invitation to find strength and wisdom. Oh, how we need this. He said in Isaiah 40, verse 29, he gives strength to the weary and to him that lacks might. He gives increasing power. James 1, 5, if any man among you lack wisdom, 
Let him ask of God, pray, and I will give it to all men liberally and abrade it not. He gives us an invitation to come and him find wisdom, which is seeing things like God sees it from God's perspective, God's point of view. That's wisdom. Then uh, next, he gives us an invitation uh, to give us protection and, and help. My favorite psalm for this is Psalm 91. But uh, I'm going to give you Psalm 40, verses 1 and 2 tonight, where David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry, and he brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, out of destruction is what he's meaning. And he set my feet upon the solid rock and established my goings. He made my steps firm. Praise be uh, to God. And then in Micah, let me find that for you. In the book of uh, uh, Micah, it says here, if you give me just a minute, I believe I can find it. Micah chapter uh, 7 and verse 4, the last chapter of Micah said, the best of them is as, as a briar, and most uh, of them uh, are sharper than a thorn hedge. And the day of the watchman, a prayer man, as the visit, this visitation cometh, now shall be there perplexity. In other words, God says to be, build a hedge, a, a hedge of thorns, as Job did and through prayer. That's how you build a bridge, hedge of prayer around your children, around your home, around your church, your pastor and members. Pray that hedge. Pray that hedge of thorns that they would be pain in the eyes of the evildoer and protect and protect them. Pray for your children. Pray for that, for your prodigal children that are out of God's will, that they have come back to God and they'll lose the friendship of ungodly people. The heads of thorns will do that. And also encamped about with the angels of God, as Psalm 91 says. Then last of all, the invitation of God to bear one another's burdens, to be intercessors. Some of us I give general prayer requests, but we need to learn without giving any uh, glory to sin. Uh, we need to learn how to pray, share our burdens. If you don't share them, we can't bear them. I've always said that. And sometimes you may need to do it intimately and close quarters, but, and then sometimes you can do it with the church. But for the most part, he, God says to bring us uh, his burdens and uh, cast all of our care on him. Uh, and he said, with all prayer and petition or supplication, pray at all times in the spirit. And with this, be alert and persevere and pray for all saints. And we are asked to pray for one another. Of course, the famous verse is Galatians 6, 2. Bear you one another burdens and so fulfill the law of God uh, concerning you. Well, it's been good to be with you tonight. I pray that you'll write these things down. Mark, I, I meant to tell you to mark down these references. So you will have them to go to to fortify your faith comes by the word of God. Thank you, dear Lord, for the broadcast and the listeners. We pray they'll be found faithful. They'll be faithful to the house of God, the word of God, to obedience unto thee, to witness, to win souls. And, but more than anything else, to pray that they might be able to do these other things more effectively and more faithfully. Oh God, give us a give us a prayer life that's sustained and will endure until Jesus comes in his sweet and precious name. We give you the praise and thanksgiving. Amen and amen.